friends, it's Bernadette. I am the creator and channel of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck, as well as the publisher and creator of whatismyspiritanimal.com, buildingbeautifulsouls.com, and wisewitchesandwitchcraft.com. All uh, three of the biggest portals on the internet where you can get all kinds of free information about any kind of symbolism and meaning and spirituality, psychic development, and any definitely spirit animals. Um, that your heart desires and that can help you, I'm your girl. So come visit me at those places. Okay. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Florida girl and I grew up with the just tremendous honor and privilege of being able to see dolphins in the wild pretty much anytime I wanted to. And when you see them online and you hear people tell you stories about how magical they are, that nature of thing, it's, it doesn't even come close. It is something you've got to experience for yourself. So this video might take uh, a little bit longer because we're going to be talking about dolphin symbolism and meaning dolphin as a spirit totem and power animal. And they've just got so much to them that when you are being called by dolphin, there, there's a bit to unpack there. So we'll go through it one little step at a time and we'll make it fun because dolphins are about nothing if they're not about fun, childish, you know, not childish really in a negative sense, but child's play, um, being wide-eyed and innocent and always believing the good is going to happen, seeing the world for the beauty that is there, you know, kind of like through the eyes of a child. Um, so let's get started. All right. So one of the first things that I like to talk with people about when they ask me about dolphin in my deck, dolphin was chosen as the Knight of cups. And here's why in the tarot, the Knight of cups, you know, any knight is going to be all about honor and valor and protection. And dolphins are very much about that. I, there are so many thousands and thousands of documented cases around the world where dolphins will save other sea animals, where they will save, you know, um, humans that are under attack or are drowning and they'll make sure they get to safety. Um, there is just something about these fun, loving, playful creatures that is just so inspiring and just so admirable because they are animals of valor. It does seem um, that they are more interested in being the helpers of the ocean than being big jerks like sharks, you know, they who are very misunderstood and I'm really not maligning them, but let's face it, they're not so warm and cuddly really. Um, from what we understand about them right now, who knows, maybe a great white, maybe a great white really wants to be your best friend. Um, and maybe we'll prove that one day, but today is not that day. So back to dolphins. So interestingly, killer whales who are very known for their incredible raw fierceness um, and who I, I want to travel to Alaska and I want to do whale watching, but I got to be honest, I kind of get the heebies when I think about, you know, um, killer whales. I don't know why they just kind of heave me out. Um, so I'm trying to work past that so I can go have a successful trip. But anyway, they're actually dolphins. Here's why I bring that up. When we are talking about the symbolism and meaning of any animal, in this case, we're talking about dolphin symbolism and meaning, right? Okay. It's important to know kind of who your cousins and your family and you, who, you know, down South, we call it your kin, who your kin is, because some of those traits can be taken um, into consideration, even when working with another member of the family. So, um, when you are really thinking about dolphin as your spirit totem or power animal, well, any, any animal that you're looking at as your spirit totem and power animal, I implore you guys to get shamanic, like get your shamanism on people because when shaman look at like, what does this mean? Why is this coming to me in a dream, a meditation? Um, if I'm journeying for a client and I'm shown this animal, I always take into consideration the totality of what it can mean. So for instance, we want to look with every animal. We want to look to its element. We want to look to its um, cardinal direction. We want to look to its color. We want to look to the numbers that show up. So for instance, with dolphin, because dolphin is a mammal and they, they 
they can dive unbelievably deep. I want to say it's like a thousand feet. They can go really deep, but they have to come up for air every five or six minutes. I, I think that's right. I'd have to double check that uh, fact, but um, it is um, just a, a really interesting thing with them because, you know, listen, dolphins are well known for their intelligence. It's on the level of apes, uh, very, very close to man. And, and people that work with them will tell you that in many ways, they're a lot smarter um, than man or ape. And I, I could believe that because they live in both worlds, kind of. So as a mammal, and they have to breathe air, but they can hold their breath and dive underwater. They're part of the air element, which the cardinal direction of that is east, which is about new beginnings. It's about your psychic development, hearing and uh, hearing messages from the divine that come to you on the wind. And then the water element is about the spirit of the West. That is about uh, abundance and uh, reaping what you sow and all the great things that will come to you during a harvest. It's about the fall time of year, whereas East is about the spring time of the year. So all of these things you've got to take into consideration. And when you're working with the water element, that is about emotional depth how deep are those emotions running how clear is that water how murky is that water and this is not this is not shared with you all to confuse you but i'm one of your helpers along the way as you discover more about creating your own shamanic practice or considering you know getting into the practice of shamanism or you know just your arsenal of of information to work as a shamanic healer and practitioner it's it, it's a holistic view of how to work with the animal medicine and energy and in the absence of it chances are very good that when you try to deliver a message or a healing for somebody you probably might i, I would venture to say you you might only be getting a, a portion of the picture not the total picture so when we uh take a look at the directions the west it, it kind of symbolizes that it's that water thing it's the moving out of ignorance into wisdom and and it's asking you to put away your childish ways and evolve to become your most sage self and and so that might be a little confusing because when you think of dolphin and earlier i said well they're all about childish or child's play think of the wisest people on the planet they're children, not childish people, not immature people, but children who have not forgotten, who have not lost the ability to see the magic, to experience pure joy just for the sake of experiencing pure joy. Have you ever watched a dolphin leap out of the water? Have you ever watched the spinner dolphins? Doesn't it take your breath away? Don't don't you long to be that wild and free? And yes, when I'm at the grocery store, I would love the ability to just spin and spin and spin and spin in front of people just to catch their attention. Maybe one day I'll try it. But um, they just, that's wisdom right there, y'all. I mean, plain and simple from a country girl, that is wisdom right there, is when you can still see your way clear to see things through the eyes of a child. In, in the direction of the East, that is about a higher level of awareness. It's the air element that's coming out of awareness and moving into spiritual wisdom. And there is a difference between sage wisdom of the earth and spiritual wisdom of the higher realms, right? It, it, it has to do with the way that you see things and, and the things that matter to you or, or bother you or move you in a positive way or don't, or it's just a kind of a, not higher like it's, well, you know, I've got a higher knowledge. Uh, it's an evolving, it's an evolvement, I would say. And so when you work with dolphins, their symbolism and meaning, um, this mammal gives you the ability to tap into both of those directions, both of those elements and, and navigate between them to be what good shaman are, tapped in shaman, um, learned shaman, and certainly um, spirit totem and power animals can be, and you can be as a psychic journeyer, a walker in both worlds. And by considering yourself that, 
by working with dolphin energy to be able to go back and forth very smoothly between the world of spirit and deep emotions and the world of, you know, um, divine messages and new beginnings and, and, and all of those things we just talked about, the, the things that dolphin can help you accomplish in relationships, in love, in careers, in self-understanding, in creating uh, the kind of environment you want inside of you and outside of you. Y'all, I could talk about dolphins forever and ever and ever. But let's go. So now that you know when you're working with dolphin energy, right? We know that we've we've got the element down. We've got the cardinal direction down. We've got their meanings. We've got the time, you know, the season down. You understand that can come into play. And so what other kinds of things can we talk about as regards dolphins that could be really helpful? Where well, here's where I like to um, talk about some of the things that I don't think can be ignored when you are trying to determine what animal energy you want to work with or what an animal is trying to tell you or somebody else. And that are that's facts, facts about the animals. So in this case, dolphin facts, right? Did you know that dolphins can turn their head 180 degrees? I, I don't, I didn't, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't until I read it right before I did this video. And I'm like, really? And then I'm like trying to visualize all the gajillions of times I've seen dolphins and I, I can't visualize it, but I know that it's true. And what that tells you is that dolphins can, can give you the ability Remember, they dive below, they're in the water element, that's very deep emotions, they come up for air, and their eyesight is as acute, is as good above the water as it is below the water. And with their heads having the ability to spin around like that, dolphins can really help you see everything from every angle. They can help you see the logic, they can help you see the emotion, they can help you see both sides, all sides, up and down and back and forth of a story. And remember we talked about that sageness, that wisdom, dolphins can help you really navigate waters that are churning, that are choppy, that are maybe a little bit dark, and it'll help you do that to some great success. The other thing that is amazing about, about dolphins is scientists are coming to believe that actually dolphins name themselves and that they use a, a set of custom custom whistles to identify themselves. Uh, I just, I'm like, that, that self-identity, I personally think all animals have that. I think they know who they are, but just science being able to prove it, that is so huge. And what that says to me as a shamanic teacher, when I'm working with people with their spirit, totem and power animals, the animal allies, the animal kingdom is if a dolphin wants to be identified and wants you to know who they are and they're willing to quote unquote label themselves, then that is such a huge call for you to step into your own power to know exactly who you are and be absolutely comfortable with vocalizing that. Whether it's about your sexual identity, your gender identity, do you want to be known as a doctor? Do you want to be known as a helper? Do you want to be known as the best cupcake cook ever? Do you want to be known as the nicest person who's ever lived? Like what, what is your name? Claim your name, claim your space, claim your place. And don't be afraid to do that. Again, if dolphin wants us to know who they are, I think it's really important that we understand it's, it's important for the world to know who we are. And it's important for you to know that and to be okay with vocalizing that to the world. So also super interesting is dolphins shut down half of their brain while they sleep and they'll switch they'll switch sides as they wake up they snooze they wake up they snooze if there's if there's ever in any animal symbolism anywhere any animal that represents the ability 
to go in and out of the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, the waking world and the world that's out there, our, connecting with the Akashic records, our higher self, our psychic eye, our mediumship skills. I don't know that there's an animal out there that, well, snakes, but that's a whole nother story, but not in this way. So when you want to work with your ability to switch back and forth between this world and the next, remember dolphins switch their, the halves of their brains on and off and on and off and on and off. The other, um, oh, well, this list goes on and on and on, right? About dolphin symbolism and meaning. But one of the things, because dolphins move so fast and they're, you know, they're just, they're fast people. They're just fast and they're slick in the water and they're slick in the air but they gestate their babies for 17 months. 17, y'all. That's only a month shy of what a human does. Okay, that's almost, I mean, double, uh, only a month double, shy of double what a human does. Now, I've never been fortunate enough to have children, but from my friends that have had children, <laughs> they were, they wanted to get that thing out of them by the time they hit like six months, right? So, I can't imagine gestating anything for 17 months except a baby that I want. And a baby can mean a physical baby. Um, the ark took over two years to bring to market it, what it took to find the animals, do the artwork. And I mean, it's, it's my baby. Let's say that you've got a house that you want to buy, a place you want to live, a career that you want to have, a relationship. It, it's all gestating. It's all nurturing it and protecting it and feeding it all the right things and making sure that you have a healthy birth and that you've taken very good care of it. But it's also a call to slow your roll, soul, because what you want, you might overtend that baby, you might undertend that baby. And when the baby's born, it might be born prematurely. And then you've got way more problems on your hands, way, way, way more problems. If you're talking about a human baby, let's say that you launch a business before you have your whole plan or all your facts in place. Let's say that you meet somebody and two weeks later, you're like, this is it. This is my soulmate. We're getting married. Um, and I'm not saying that doesn't work sometimes. Sure it does. There are people that have been married for a jillion years that met and three weeks later they were married. It's not the norm, but it does work. I'm just saying be cautious, right? Remember dolphins might move fast. They are highly intelligent. They think fast, but when it comes to giving birth to things, they take their time, 17 months in fact. Okay, so that's a lot about animal sim uh, dolphin symbolism and meaning. And, you know, I, I think it, well, I'm going to say it goes without saying, and then I'm going to say it anyway. Remember, dolphins are pod people. They're pod animals. It's about family. It's about community. And when they're saving species that are not their own species, that's just a huge harbinger, a huge omen that we are in this together. We are our brother's keeper. We are responsible for one another in as much as we can be. So... If you can lend a hand to somebody who's different than you, lend a hand to somebody who's different, even if they don't thank you, even if you aren't even there to see the good results, even if no one ever knows that you did something great, do it anyway, right? Okay, so when we talk about dolphin as a spirit totem and power animal, if this is your first video with me, then um, let me explain that the, the, the words spirit animal, totem animal, and power animal really mean the same thing just depends on which culture that that you're getting the information from and what they call that animal spirit right but it kind of all means the same thing they kind of all serve the same function but it can be confusing and when it comes to getting messages helping people better understand their spirit totem and power animals work with them for healings for divining you know information from the other side it can really get confusing. So I asked the spirit animals to help me better be able to explain it. The full video is below in the notes section where you can uh, watch the video about the difference between spirit totem and power animals. But briefly, when you think of dolphin as a spirit animal, a spirit animal is the animal that shows up to you in your hour of need, when you need love, when you need support, 
when you need inspiration. Sometimes your conscious mind has called out to the animal world. You might go into a meditation or you might just say, y'all, I can't handle it. I, y'all, please send me some signs about XYZ situation or XYZ person. And the spirit world, the animal spirit guides will show up when you need them every time. The question is how they're going to show up. And the question is, are you going to recognize them when they do and accept that really is a message for you? It's a visitation. So your spirit animal can show up. Dolphin is your spirit animal. You know, let's say that you said, I am so tired. Everything. I'm just so unhappy. I just can't see my way. You know, maybe I'm even depressed. I just can't find my way out of this depression or unhappiness. And you ask the animal spirit world to show you. And all of a sudden you're seeing dolphins everywhere. And you've got friends that are talking about going to Florida or to, you know, out to the West Coast. Or, you know, some little kid walks by and they've got a dolphin toy. Or you even see a sports insignia, the Miami Dolphins. All of a sudden you're seeing their shirts and their hats and their logo everywhere. Um, That's a sign that dolphin is trying to get your attention. Let's say that you do a meditation and dolphin swims right up to you. You know, that happened to me one time. And I know a lot of people talk a lot of smack about being able to, you know, hitch a ride with animals like Bran in um, Game of Thrones. And I, I believe that happens. I believe it's rare. I don't believe that it happens as often as people will tell you that it happens to them. But I can report scouts honor on my mother's grave on every animal life that's ever been or ever will be i was in a session with my dear dear friend katherine skaggs katherineskaggs.com she's an incredible artist a visionary artist shamanic artist and an amazing shaman and so she was leading us through a meditation and i just you know i said to the spirit world exactly that y'all i am i am so tired and i just I just, I don't think I've lost my ability to have fun, but it's just been so long since I've just had fun. Send me the animal that I need. Now, it didn't have to be dolphin that was sent. It it could have been any animal that would have suited Bernadette's needs because it's different for everyone, right? Just because dolphin is the animal for, you know, child's play and seeing things through the eyes of a child, that doesn't mean that it's right for everybody in the moment that they're asking for help with a particular subject. But darn if this dolphin didn't show up. And the next thing I felt was I felt myself merge with that dolphin. And when I opened my psychic eyes, we were underwater. And I am here to tell you, I know what it feels like to zoom through the oceans. I know what the pockets of temperature feel like. I know what it feels like to have the plankton up against me. I know how it is to turn my head this way, this way, look up and see everything going on and feel so not even at home, but just, uh, yeah, this is, this is my place. These are my people. It, 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 it only lasted a minute or two, but I'll never forget it. And I had that happen twice before, once with a bear, Um, that shocked the poo out of me. And once with an eagle that I was so young and new to metaphysics, I poo-pooed it as it's a figment of my imagination. (laughs) No, it wasn't. Um, I, I know what it feels like to hitch a ride or to become that animal, to wear the suit of that animal and go into their environment. One of the things that I felt when I was, um, with that animal, I was very acutely aware of the blowhole. And when I surfaced and, you know, out of that blowhole, that became for dolphin symbolism and meaning for me and the work that I do, it became an enduring symbol of when you've got to speak your truth, when you've got to move that air out of your throat chakra and get it out of this blowhole right here, or you're going to drown or you're going to suffocate. That's it. Dolphins don't breathe on their own. They cannot be anesthetized because they've got to remember to breathe and they breathe without going into all the scientific facts. Bottom line is when, when you need to play like a child, when you're really having trouble getting those words that need to be said, your truth, 
ugh, you're having trouble getting them from your throat chakra out your your mouth, your blowhole, dolphin is a great, great, great animal spirit guide to call on for that. So sometimes you can have uh, animals show up and you're just not even sure why. I had that situation with a unicorn once upon a time and a unicorn just kept showing up, showing up, showing up. And I was going through a really kind of tough time in my life. I was going through a divorce and the more that dang unicorn showed up, the madder I got. Cause I was like, okay, listen, this is not rainbow bright. I'm not nine. What the hell? But sure enough, as it comes to find out the house that I was able to buy, like in the blink of an eye, the perfect house for me. Um, and you see part of it here. I'm in my office. Um, I, I was able to buy. And then one day it occurred to me, I was driving out of my neighborhood and I went, Oh my God, this house is right next to the forest of the unicorn community. How did I not get that? And I just cried and cried and cried and cried because it was such a powerful message from spirit. We had you back all along. Even when you were a jerk to us and telling us, you know, what the hell? And I don't want a unicorn. Um, they didn't care. They stuck with it anyway, as will dolphin with you. So if you're just like all of a sudden, what the heck is all this dolphin stuff? Take a minute, take a breath and start thinking about the things that you're hurting about the people that are hurting you, the things you might be doing to yourself, what situations are not working for you, what, what just is not, what's bogging you down, what's dragging you down into the depths, the depths of the ocean, rather than being, you know, more playful and at the top of the water and the water being clear and call on dolphin to help you see that and navigate through that. Now, when we work with totem animals, I always say, when you want to know your totem animals, start with your zodiac sign. That's the animal that you were born under. In the Western Zodiac, the Celtic Zodiac, the Native American Zodiac, there's Mayan, there's Aztec. There are a number, uh, did I say Chinese? I think I did. There are a number of forms of astrology out there. No one of them more right than the next, but the ones that are really uh, I think most well researched just because they've been used for so much longer is the Celtic, the native American, um, and, and way at the top of the list are the Chinese Zodiac and the Western Zodiac. So let's say that you're a water sign. Let's say you're a cancer. Let's say that you are a fire sign. You're a lion, right? Well, start with that first, but there might be other animals that you resonate with and you're more like than the actual animal that represents your zodiac sign. For me, it's bear. And I mean, it, there, I have been obsessed with bears since I was a kid. I'm built like a bear. I act like a bear. My name Bernadette is the feminine counterpart to the French name Bernard, which translated means brave, strong bear. So my name before I was ever a metaphysician or shamanic practitioner or psychic medium, anything like that, tarot reader, I, I was named for the animal by that I felt the closest to from the time I can remember seeing animals. So it, it, it's you, you can't <clears throat> discount your zodiac sign in making you who you are, but you can identify with other animals and those animals can change over time. You can identify with other animals to teach you who you are at your core and help show you why you say the things you do, why you don't do the things that you don't do, even if you should do them or, or any, you know, any of those variables, it can really help you. So, um, when it comes to working with animals as power animals, and let me just say, sorry, let me just say one more thing about totem animals. I'm of the opinion that reincarnation is a thing like a real thing. And I'm also of the opinion, because I can't prove it to you, so it's just gotta be my opinion. I'm of the opinion that we spend lifetimes as different animals, maybe even as a rock, maybe even as a tree, maybe even as a plant. We, we share DNA pairings with plants and animals. Go figure, why, why wouldn't we have been them in a past life? Maybe we're gonna be them in a future life, right? So when you 
are considering your totem, understand that even though your sacred contract might have been to come in this life as, like with me, I'm a triple Scorpio. All across the board, it's snakes and scorpions. They're not my favorite animals. But admittedly, I'm very Scorpio-esque. Very. But I'm also very bear-like. And so I try to choose to work in the energy of the medicine that's best about all of those animals and choose that medicine when the time is right, when the situation is right for that. So that said, when you work with any animal as your power animal, in this case, we're working as dolphin, dolphin power animal, that's about invoking the part of that animal that lives inside of you because we're all connected. We all have the ability to be a viper, meanie snake or a terrifying shark. Um, even, you know, when we talk about Pegasus or the Minotaur or any of the, you know, fantasy or mythological animals, it all lives inside of us. We are the universe. We are parts of the big whole and you can access those things at any time. You can choose, let's say you're a person that has a raging, raging temper. You can choose to stop it, control it, work around it. You can choose to do that. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that you, you do have a choice and you can choose to do that. So let's say that you're like, I'm so tired. I'm so draggy. I'm just so miserable. And you're like, you know what? I am going to call on my dolphin energy. And however you do that, some people create vision boards, some people draw dolphins, some people watch Nat Geo videos about dolphins, some people just look at their pictures, they watch videos of them online, um, you know, movies, uh, songs, even just hearing their, their that chitter that they do, you know, in a video, anything that you can do, it, it could be about uh, really picking yourself up a, a dolphin carving or a dolphin toy. You might be a, a Miami Dolphins fan. You might decide to go to a game and that will cheer you up. Um, you know, cause anywhere that serves beer will certainly cheer me up, but it's, uh, it's, it's basically finding the power of what you need and want in that animal and bringing it out of you. Again, going back to the blowhole, the speaking your truth of getting that air out, moving that air along, you may need to call on, on dolphin as your power animal when you need to speak a truth, when you need to move fast, when you need to see all sides of a situation, when you need to be able to better understand both sides of a situation. Remember, dolphins are tied to the air element above water, although there is air and water, there's oxygen and water. And they're tied to the water element, which is about those deeper emotions, right? And so usually what you'll find is when there are warring factors, factors that disagree, they all have their definite opinions, things that are going on in their mind. And then they also have their emotions that are, you know, catching a feeling, as we say in the South, we've done caught a feeling, right? So as a navigator between both worlds, dolphin can help you navigate to see both sides of the situation and maybe help them come together in harmony and balance. And that doesn't mean outside, that means inside of you as well. It's dolphins are fantastic for great, great for self-reflection. I'm trying to figure out how to word this because I, I just want to say so much at once, but you know how kids, <laughs> You know, they're just going to tell you how they see it. Your breath smells, you're fat, you're really nice. I like you best, you know, and you know, they love you when they want to share their toys or their cookies or their candy or whatever. But when you are doing self-reflecting, I don't know that there's any better animal than dolphin, because if you can see your way clear to be in that childlike innocent, just say it like it is kind of space, you can be really honest with yourself. You may not like what you have to say, but is it the truth? 
I mean, listen, who, who among us loves to hear those hard truths? I don't. I teach this stuff every day. I work in this world every day. And it's usually my sister, my North Star, that's like, hey, Bernadette, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay. And sometimes I see it. And sometimes I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't see how you got there. Help, help me out, right? Um, but it, it is, it, with dolphins love of community, with their want of living in a pod, That's the way they are naturally. And, you know, listen, I'm kind of a loner. Actually, I'm a lot of a loner. And who among us, because I'm filming this during the pandemic, COVID, lockdown, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of lonely people out there, y'all. We, I just don't think we are designed to be loners. I think we're, some of us are more designed than others to have alone time. But without going into the whole deep thing about electricity and the science of you know, the electricity that the human body and the human mind and this and that puts out and how it merges with everything else in the, you know, in, in, in the, in the biosphere that's earth, so on and so forth. I just don't think we're meant to be alone. And I think if you find yourself alone and lonely, dolphin is a great animal ally, um, to, to help you do some self discernment, to help you do some self reflection, to dive deep into what's, what's causing your separation. And how, how do you rectify that? How do you fix that? How do you come to a place of trust? How do you come to a place where you accept that other people do love you? And when they tell you they love you and want to include you, that's really what they mean. They don't feel sorry for you. They're not trying to do you a favor. They really love you. Um, if you don't really love people, you know, I laugh all the time and I say the world is too peopley, but it really is, which is why I, you know, my life is animals. But I you know, I love a good gathering as much as the next person, maybe more, maybe more because I do, I do kind of hold myself back from joining, being a joiner, being part of groups, being, you know, that kind of thing. It just, it's not always comfortable for me. I, I, you listen, if you've watched more than one of my videos, you kind of know I'm a little bit of a social dork, you know, it's not really hard to see. So, um, it can be uncomfortable, but when, when I want it and I, and I know I need to do it, but moreover, I want it. Dolphin is who I call on, um, you know, to put that big smile on my face and tell the jokes and make the laughter and be part of the joy that's at any gathering and, um, for what it helps other people, but certainly for what it brings to me too. So, you know, um, so that's, that's, a, there you go about working with, Dolphin is a spirit totem and power animal. And then when we take a look at, you know, dolphin in other meanings, we, we definitely want to look at dreams, right? So when we are dreaming of dolphins, that very much goes back to what's going on in that dream. Is the dolphin out of the water, in the water, half in the water, half out of the water? Can the dolphin breathe? Is the dolphin having a time, having a hard time clearing its blowhole? How many dolphins were in there? Dolphins by and large, you know, except for killer whales, obviously, um, that are dolphins, they're gray or silver. They could be considered silver. How dark was that gray? How shiny was that silver? Um, were the dolphins chittering? Were they talking to you dead on? Were they trying to get you to follow them? All of those things, when you're interpreting dreams about dolphins, all of those things will come into play. But really at the end of the day, you'd go back to the core symbolism and meaning, the core omens, the core, you know, this is what the spiritual meaning of this is about, which is just relax and have a good time be vigilant about keeping your eyes open on how to be the helper, how to help other people, how to help protect them, how to help protect yourself. What, you know, what, what do you, what do you want to be known as? Who do you want to be known as? Remember the, the dolphins are now believed that they self-identify. They've got those series of unique clicks of unique sounds that identify self. Who do you want to be identified as? The minute you wake up from your dream about dolphins, write it down, write down all of that symbolism. And some things will hit you over time, meaning your dolphin as a spirit animal may come to you in your dreams. You may have asked for the power 
um, of whatever you need to use about dolphin to come to you as your power animal. And that may have needed to come to you in your dream. You may not have been really, um, asking the animal to come to you, but you might have a situation where you, it needs a resolution of some kind and dolphin shows up in your dreams. But when you come out of that dream, you don't feel like it was a spirit animal. You don't feel like it was really to be called on as a power animal, but rather you're like, gee, I kind of feel like I had a dream about myself. I get that a lot. You guys from clients, I get that a lot. And that's when, you know, it's probably time to adopt, um, dolphin as your power or your totem animal. So I thank you for watching. I hope this is really helpful to you. Oh, I hope in your lifetime you get to see dolphins in the wild. I just, they are, they are, they are y'all. I could just sit in Pensacola and watch them forever. I could sit off the banks of St. Augustine and watch them forever. And one day I hope to swim in the wild with wild dolphins around me. Not a fan of the parks where you can pay to swim with them. Not a fan for the most obvious reasons. Um, but I, yeah, that's my dream. So as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I feel like I don't look like a total Humpty Dumpty in a wetsuit, I'm gonna climb in a wetsuit and go, I'm going to go swim with the dolphins. So, um, I really want to encourage you to get the Ark Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. You may not care a fig about tarot and that's fine because there are a hundred cards in this deck. This is only just part of them that my hands can pick up. There's a hundred cards in this deck and they can be used as tarot cards, but with a hundred cards, really it's all about the animal and it's about working as a shamanic practitioner, a shamanic healer, a psychic, a medium. How can you better work with the animal allies more closely to help divine messages from the other side for your clients, for yourself, your friends, your family? When you want to talk about somebody that needs healing in a certain chakra, whatever, what animal has come to them? And this can help you do that. Uh, the arc is for beginners as well as really way more experienced because it comes with a 370 something page book that has very detailed, but super easy to follow um, meanings and symbolism about the animal as a tarot card and also just as a spirit totem and power animal. There's information in here on how to give readings, on um, the cardinal directions, the elements, the colors, the numbers, and what those mean when you're interpreting symbolism and meaning of the animal world. So I absolutely, love the time that you guys allow me to spend with you. And again, I thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel, but really the most important thing is to stay wild. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.